Hey everybody, you're watching the Mud Guy RC, and I'm the Mud Guy. And uh, this is part two of my my Wraith build, which is Project Ares. And uh, right now, you can see I have my new. I won this this chassis with uh, the DMG Stiffy Kit. I won that from a contest at the end of uh, December from Harley Designs Inc. If you don't watch Harley, you should. It's a great channel. Uh, we were very proud to have this on our channel. We got lucky. Uh, I believe this was the chassis that he was going to use for his fender bender build. I'm not 100% sure, but I, I think it is. He was going to do a 1.9 uh, wheel size wraith uh, and use this as his chassis. And he, I guess he changed his mind, switched over to uh, the uh, the new Matt Zilla chassis. If you want to check that out, go to Harley Designs Inc., the, uh, the YouTube channel, and you can see all about his builds and his projects. But I believe this was the fender bender. And lucky for us, he changed his mind and we won his contest. So now it belongs to us. It's going to be part of Project Aries. So let me go into a little bit of detail about what a, a DMG Stiffy Kit is. I know a lot of you guys think, well, what DMG Stiffy Kit? That sounds like a Viagra pill in a Playboy magazine. But what it is is it's an aluminum custom piece fabricated by fabricated by uh, the DMG Death Metal Garage. Uh, the guy the guy that owns and operates this company is Jerry Justice. You can find him on rccrawler.com. I don't know how booked or backed up he is, it might be a little difficult to get something like this. We're very fortunate to have it here. So let me describe a little bit of uh, some of the components and some of the features of what the, the Stiffy Kit is. Uh, first of all, it's an aluminum piece that goes right here in between your two uh, Wraith side pieces of your cage here, and it reinforces the, uh, the structure side to side. Uh, painted black, so it's really hard to tell what's, what's, what's uh, part of the Stiffy Kit and what's part of your Wraith cage. But uh, Basically what it is, is you have reinforcing bars here, you have a cutoff back, it's a little bit shorter in the back, and you have this slanted down fastback look, which is kind of cool, and you also have uh, tabs here welded in that uh, bring your shocks up a little bit, which lowers the entire wraith down to give you a better center of gravity. Uh, on top of that, you get a nice little flat piece here instead of having that angled wraith roof, so it's easier to make your own roof panels. I think it looks a little bit cooler. Uh, so structurally, uh, it's not very heavy. It's made out of aluminum. Very, very fine quality. It gives you strength side to side, lowers your, your wraith so you have a better center of gravity, and it gives you that cool fastback look. I'm sure there's other you know features that are, that are appealing too uh, that I haven't discovered yet, but I'm very fortunate to have it here in my Project Ares. Uh, this specific DMG Stiffy Kit was designed to use trailing arms. These tabs are up a little bit closer to the cab as opposed to back further. Uh, I, the, the, trailing arm, the trailing arms that were suggested to me were from Blue Monkey RC. They're closed for January. They're not taking any orders till February, so I'm not able to get those. Uh, when I mock this up right here and I'm looking at the back, it doesn't look bad to me. I don't know. I don't have any experience with this, and I really won't know how this performs until I actually drive it and get used to it and learn more about, you know, rays and off-road trail riding. Uh, but for the most part, it looks good to me. It bumps the, it, from, from a stock position, I'm looking, it looks like I'm gaining about 15 to 20 millimeters. The front now, that's, that's the only issue. I need to bump these shocks up a little bit higher without protruding into my, uh, my hood here. So I made these, these little mounts here, and uh, I, didn't, I didn't get the holes right because I don't have a metric drill set. I, I'm going to look into that in the future. But basically, I'm going to bump these shocks up the same distance, that the, the same height that these shocks are, lower the whole thing down a little bit so you have a nice even ride height. And that should give me something better than, than a stock setup. So I have to do that yet. Uh, as you can see, I started kind of mocking up where I'm going to put certain things here uh, in, 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 the, in the kit. And uh, with this Stiffy kit, you can't put a battery in the back. The, the, uh, the, the stock Wraith, you can slide the battery right in the back. Most people put the battery up front anyway. It gives you better uh, better gravity up front, and uh, which is good for crawling, as far as I know. Uh, so what they do is they put the battery right in here with some kind of battery box. That, this is the only battery I have right now that's going to be suitable for this. And I don't really want to buy anything right now. So it barely fits in here. It's a Traxxas. It's a 5,000 milliamp uh, pack 3-cell. And it barely fits in here, but I'm going to make it work. I'm going to build myself a little box so I can shove that up front. And uh, as far as the receiver and, and the speed control, I'll give you a little bit of a heads up here. I went with the RX-8. <laughs> I know the first thing everybody's thinking is, what the hell, that's overkill. Uh, it is. I got a great deal on this, though. And the thing that I like about the RX-8 is, besides the fact that I was very curious about it, when I built my Mugen, I wanted to get 
an RX-8 a Tekken system, and you just couldn't. You just couldn't. You know, they were they were coming out with the Gen twos, and you just couldn't get any of the the, the original ones. And uh, so I was always curious about it. So when this thing came on sale, and I had a great deal of the, the power of Tower. Believe me, Tower Hobbies just blows my mind. Some of the deals I get there got this really cheap. I decided to go with it. And why I went with the T8 is because this is going to be the brain of my Wraith forever. And that gives me full reign over any type of motor that I ever want to put in here. I have a motor coming. We'll talk more about that when it comes in the mail. I ordered it. It's, it's, it's already been shipped. I have transmission parts coming too this week. So hopefully sometime this week I can get you uh, some type of vid on the transmission. I, I don't think I'm going to have the exterior done for a while yet. But I do want to have this thing running. I'm I, I dying to see what this thing you know, can do. Uh, so hopefully I can get you a transmission video sometime this week and, and show it running maybe over the weekend. No promises. But anyway, so I went with the, uh, the, the Tekken 8 and uh, I have options of where I can put this. And where I kind of want to put it is right here next to the driver. You know, I, I'm not that concerned with scale. I do want to have a driver. I want to have a driver's seat. I want to have a driver. I want to have some kind of comical figure in there that represents our channel. But I'm not overly concerned with having a passenger. So I think I'm just going to, you know, go easy on myself and mount the uh, the, 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 the Tekken here right next to the, the driver's side, you know, instead of having a seat there. The, uh, the receiver is going to go right here up front. I'm going to try to do my best to, to the, it comes with a case, I'm going to do my best to make sure that's waterproof because that's going to get a lot of gunk being down low. Uh, battery here, and I'm also going to try to do some kind of simple LED light system. I'm not 100% positive about that yet, but uh, that those those wires and everything like that will be shoved up front here. So receiver here, battery here, ESC here. This back spot here would be a good place to mount something, but I'm not going to do anything there. I'm just going to leave this all open and raw on the back. Uh, so... You know, I, 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 like I said, not really hip to scale. I mean, I'm sure in the future I might add some scale items to this, but for the most part, I'm, I'm, I'm looking to see what this thing can do. I, I want to learn. I want to, I want to grow. You know, and I want to, I want to see this wraith in action. So for the most part, we're just gonna, you know, experiment with motors. Uh, like I said, I got, I got transmission stuff coming. <laughs> One of the problems with being stuck inside in, in the middle of a polar vortex is that you spend too much time watching YouTube videos and not enough time working. So. Completely custom transmission, uh, custom meaning aftermarket transmission. You know, it's not not custom per se, but aftermarket transmission. And uh, I got a motor coming, and I don't want to touch base on that yet. I don't want to give away all my my you know things, but it's going to be a brush motor, and it's coming in the mail. So hopefully, I can get that installed. You know, get the leads soldered up and and, and have everything ready to go with that. Uh, the Tegan. I still want to get the, uh, the I guess it's called the Hotwire, the Hotwire uh, USB interface for this so I can program it on the computer. I'm really looking forward to that because I've never done anything like that before. Uh, and all in all, so that's where I'm at right now. Like I said, I might try the trailing arms in the back. This doesn't look bad to me. I have the same approach, uh, the same angle of the shocks as the front. So I'm not overly concerned about the trailing arms yet. I think it might lower... My center of gravity a little bit more because the, the mount for the shock actually goes inside the trailing arm but then i have to address this up front here and the more i lower this the more this wants to come up and protrude through my hood and i don't want that i don't want shocks coming up through the hood so you know we'll see we'll just we'll just have to play with it and and see how everything turns out i'm gonna go with aluminum panels i'm gonna try to make them myself i have a ton of flashing right now but flashing might be a little bit too thin for this uh, I've never heard of anybody using flashing. They use something a little bit thicker, but I have a ton of flashing. It's easy to work with. I'm used to working with it. I don't know if it's going to be too sharp. You know, maybe that, that could be an issue, uh, but that's, that's, that's in the future. So give me a little bit of time to get the transmission done. Oh, one other thing I did here, I added spacers up front here. I noticed once I got this cage on here, this chassis, uh, your front servo horn hits the, 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 uh, the stock position of, of your bumper. I don't know why that was designed like that. I, I, I'm not sure why, but to get full articulation, not that I don't, I, I'm not sure that I'll need that or not, but for this servo to go all the way up freely, you have to bump this bumper out just a little bit further. So I added some spacers in here. I don't know, I don't think it looks terrible. It doesn't look great, but I don't think for the most part it's gonna make one difference one way or the other, but hey, whatever. So <laughs> I got wheels to mount up, uh, tires to mount on wheels. I am going with, with bead locks. We'll show them in another video. So this is all I can give you right now. It's cool. I'm, I'm loving this project. It's getting even better and more dynamic as time goes by. The whole idea of having a stock Wraith is, is completely trashed. 
this is going to be custom rig. So my first rig, and, and I have really no idea what I'm doing, but I, I'm reading a lot, I'm researching a lot, I'm watching a lot of other YouTube channels to see what guys are, are, are doing and what they suggest. And uh, it's been a lot of fun, but like I said, this is what happens when you get cabin fever and you watch too much YouTube videos. You know, you do more upgrades than you do working and driving. So <laughs> anyway, that's it for today. So uh, I'll try to get a video out this, this weekend, during the week, on the transmission and we'll do maybe we'll do like a bench time with the bear on uh this this weekend to uh kind of update everybody i'd like to get some running video of something the weather's not going to be so bad this week i'd like to get something so you're not just stuck inside my basement every video so for for uh mud guy i'm the mud guy you guys take care and look forward to part three